can't empty themselves. They can't get past their own knowledge. God spoke uh, to Job in this regard. And it doesn't just apply to scientists because anybody who possesses a knowledge can be puffed up in their own thing. But tell me, Mr. Geologist, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, Mr. Oceanographer, who has enclosed the sea with doors? Tell me, Mr. Meteorologist, where is the way to the dwelling of light and darkness? Where is its place that you may take it to its territory, that you may discern the paths of its home? (laughs) Tell me, Mr. Cosmologist, can you bind the chains of the Pleiades or loose the cords of Orion? Can you lead forth a constellation in its season or guide the bear with her cubs? Do you know the ordinance of heaven or who fixed their rule over the earth? Tell me, Mr. Doctor of Education, who has put wisdom in the innermost being or given understanding to the mind? And this is like limitless when you go through here. I think he covers everybody. And so here stands Jesus. Jesus didn't learn any of this. Jesus made it. I mean, he's the creator. Now, if a person who simply makes an observation gets puffed up with himself enough so that he can't even humble himself to reach out to a lowly person but walks around like I am somebody, and then I look at Jesus who didn't just know it, he created it, and he humbled himself so that never to boast about these things. What an example that we have in him. The Word of God did all of this. And then He emptied Himself of the right to do with these things for His own pleasure. Why did He do it? To save you. But why? Why did He do it to save you? Because that was the will of the Father. Can you see the Creator, the Sustainer, the rightful Owner of all that is, that He has emptied Himself then of these things, then you are beginning to see Jesus. I can only imagine as a man, and I know that my best imagination falls way short of the reality of Jesus' preparation to come to earth. Even though God operates outside man's time, there was still the occasion when the Word left heaven, and that's what that was. People have written a lot of different stories to describe this kind of thing, and and sometimes when you read these books or see these movies, you you see they got this idea from God, this humility. There was one young man in his early 20s in 1915 in North Carolina, believe it or not. I mean, somebody from North Carolina did something worthwhile. His name was Henry, and Henry was a young pianist accompanying a conference in North Carolina. And he was stirred by the sermon of uh, J. Wilbur Chapman preaching on Psalm 45. And he captured these words, and they're pretty good. He wrote, Out of the ivory palaces, into a world of woe, only his great eternal love made my Savior go. That's what he was talking about that time period. And Jesus responded on earth in John chapter 17 with His prayer and he, that, that He knew all of these things and had access to all of these things but had emptied Himself of all of these things and He says, Father, glorify Me together with Yourself with the glory with which I had with You before the world was. Amen. Jesus didn't just not know that He used to have this stuff when He was on earth. He knew it every day. Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, how often I have wanted to gather you under my arms or under my wings as a hen does her chicks. How many things Jesus must have wanted to do because He had the power to do, but it wasn't the Father's will. And then there's this perspective of a bondservant. We're just getting lower. Taking the form of a bondservant, being made in likeness of men, being found in the appearance of a man. There was uh, some thoughts I made on this uh, last evening. I wrote them down. They're just quick words when you look at that passage. It's these words. These are about Jesus. Not regarding 
emptied himself, taking the form, being made, being found, becoming obedient. All of that has to do with humility. And now, well, how humble? Well, he's not only a man, he's a bondservant. There was a lot of writing on bondservant, by the way. People seem to really have a grasp of this. Pretty good, you know. What does it mean to be a bondservant? Basically nothing, just a slave, just whatever the master wants. There's some variations of that, but this is essentially what it is. And this is the evidence of Jesus' execution of performing His Father's will completely. He's the bondservant. He's also the example for us to be a bondservant. It is sometimes easy to plan a great event or even to plan a great sacrifice. But when the time comes to put your money where your mouth is, that shows the character of the person. Jesus did that. And that proved his character, brother. The bond servant was simply a servant bound to do the will of the master. There is an Old Testament account. We understand the drilling of the ear at the ear post. But I want you to consider several things real quick. Consider the account of Mary and Joseph. Servants, simple. Jesus, their child. Very strange family situation there in the community. Do you know the accounts of those who hated him from his birth? In his early life? Do you know the accounts of the disbelief of his family regarding who he was? Do you know of the rejection by his own people? And do you know of even the rejection of those people who once followed him to desert him? Can you see him in the form of a bondservant that he's a servant that even nobody likes? Can you see through the form of a bondservant that he was also the creator of of all that he was then serving. Mm, Not seen that bondservant before. Just seen the servant. He was bought somewhere and became the servant. Wouldn't you have liked to have been a fly on the wall and had the knowledge that that servant was the creator? I am the servant at the wedding. Oh, I created those grapes. I am the servant at the meal. I created the water in the bowl and then this stuff that was used to make the towel to wipe your feet. I'm the servant there. I created not only the dirt that I'm wiping off your feet, but I created your feet. Wouldn't it have been nice just to have known all that? Well, we have that ability. And if you believe that, then you can know it. There's no other example of this anywhere by anyone This is the bondservant. But it's not just the bondservant. It's being the bondservant with respect of who he really is. That's the humility of it. Then there's one last thing. And that is from the perspective of Jesus humbling himself to the point of death, even death on the cross. You know, I think sometimes we should just devote a whole session, a whole meeting to this subject because there is so much regarding him submitting himself to the point of death, even death on a cross. Isaiah, I think, is my favorite passage regarding that in 53. Isn't that many of yours too? His death on a cross. There is so much in there. It is... It brings tears to my eyes when I read this 